What we're going to be going over here is governmental accounting for what they refer to as the permanent fund. So when we talk about governmental accounting, we're going to have these various governmental funds like the general fund, special revenues fund here, capital projects fund, and then we get down to the permanent fund here. So we're just going to look at the basics here and what uh, we mean by the permanent fund and just some basic journal entries here for this permanent fund to see how the permanent fund really operates here. So. What we're talking about here for permanent funds, they would be referred to as public purpose trusts and also non-expendable trust funds. So the characteristics here of permanent funds. This is the case here where the earnings are expendable for a specific purpose, but the principal amount is not ex expendable here. So when you, in this case, in these permanent funds, you generally have donations coming into these permanent funds here. And the donations here are going to be some invest, say some investments, land and so forth. But of that, of those donations, the investments and the lands and that, you can't really uh, spend those land, uh, those investments. You have to keep the principal, at least the principal amount has to stay intact. But any earnings off those donations, the lands, the investments and that, the investment amount or whatever you earn off the principal amount, that can be expended here. So uh, secondly here, these uh, permanent funds, they capture the current trust activity of local governments. Thirdly, the resources received are to be invested, of which only the income again, not the principal, is uh, to be expended for a designated purpose. So that's what we were talking about. Any incomes off those uh, donations that we're going to have coming into these permanent funds or, or transfers into the permanent fund, the um, principal amount has to stay intact, but any earnings off the principal amount, those can be uh, spent here by the permanent fund. Now, earnings are generally earmarked for a special purpose. That is, they would be restricted for the special purpose. And donors often stipulate how those earnings really are to be spent. And then fifthly here, you can set up multiple permanent funds here. You may have one general fund, but you can set up uh, multiple permanent funds here within a governmental unit, whatever is required here. And then uh, lastly here, the donors or the government itself can contribute land, money, investments, or other resources and so forth for a designated use to support like parks, maybe a cemetery here, a library, or some other government programs, whatever it may be here that the government may have here. So, and then and when, you, when you record these investments here in your lands and other, um, other resources that you're gonna record here, any investment resources here, investments in stocks and bonds that may be contributed here, or land itself here, or some other resources, you record it at the fair value here. And any change in the fair value of those uh, resources here, those investments, those were re reported here as investment income. Now, the difference between the permanent fund here and the special revenue fund, and if you're familiar with the special revenue fund, you'll understand. Now, the special revenue fund here, this is, is that the only the earnings on the, well, with the difference between the permanent fund and your special revenue fund is that only the earnings on the investment can be spent here on the permanent fund, as we mentioned here, where the special revenues fund, both the principal and the earnings can be spent. And then when we look at the permanent fund as a non-expendable trust, it uses normal accrual accounting. Okay, so let's go and look at some examples here on our entry. So looking at the permanent fund, let's just look at some basic donations here and how we'd record our revenues. So first case here, say the city government contributes some money here to establish a permanent fund. And this is where the fund income, they're going to establish it here so it can be used for library operations here. So they designated that they're gonna make a contribution here to start the permanent fund, but those contributed dollars here have to be used for library operations. So within the permanent fund, we're gonna record a cash amount here, again, for the permanent fund. Let's just say the city contributed $200,000 here. And that $200,000 is gonna come from uh, the general fund here. So cash account, we're gonna debit it for $200,000 increase our cash by that amount. And then we go over to other financing sources here. We're gonna credit that for $200,000. So other financing sources, that's what uh, the cash is being transferred in from the, the, the city's general fund. And they're transferring in here in to establish 
this uh, permanent fund here. So other financing sources, that's simply the transfer in of dollars here. But the cash account here, the amount that we have recorded here in a cash account, in this case, the $200,000, that's going to have a restricted use for library operations. Okay, so let's go look at our second case here. Let's say we received a donation of stock here from a donor here. They uh, uh, contributed some stock, investment stock that they have. And the donor stipulates again that the earnings, not the principal, can be spent, in this case, on Spitty Park operations. Donor says spend the, uh, this donation he has here or this investment that he has, any income off it can be spent for City Park operations. So going down to our permanent fund, this is where we're going to record that investment in our stocks here. Now, again, here, remember if he contributed land or some other uh, some other resources here you would have to put that in here so instead of if it was land for example it would be uh, land you'd have a land account or investment in land here in case in this case let's just look at the stock case here so for our invest for our stock donation here that we received here in a permanent fund we just list investment in stocks here and in this case the donor uh, it the value of those stocks a fair value of the stocks at the date of donation here were $800,000. So credit or debit our investment in stock account here for $800,000. And then we move over to our revenues account here, again in the permanent fund. Uh, we recognize that as revenue here, going up that donation here. Credit that for $800,000. But the case here, those revenues here that we recognize in the permanent fund, they are have restricted use here for only the earnings off this investment here can be spent for those city park operations. So again, any assets that were donated or contributed here and that gone into the permanent fund here, though it being land or buildings or whatever here, in this case it was some investments, uh, investments in stock, you record them at the fair, their fair value of, in this case, the securities at that donation date. So assets here, any assets donated or received here into the permanent fund, you have to record them at their fair value at the date of donation. And then the other point is just remember this investments in stock, that $800,000 here, that is non-expendable here uh, in the permanent fund. That has to stay intact here, this $800,000. Its value can go up or down here, and then we could re we'd be actually be recording its uh, change here in the fair value in our investment stock. And then a minor point, well, a point will be that any change here, if you have an increase in it, uh, that, that principal amount here, any increases uh, probably could be spent here. But in this case, we're, we have to really keep uh, the, this, this principal amount intact here. It has a strict restricted use. Now, let's say we come along here and we receive some dividends here on this $800,000 investment that we was donated here. And we're going to look at receiving those in, uh, dividends on that investment and also transferring out to the city park operating fund that was the designated use so any earnings coming off this and in, these investments here and in that stock investments that we can use on city park operations here the designated use so going down to our cash account here say for example we receive 50 uh, that those investments in our stocks generated fifteen thousand dollars worth of dividends here so in our cash account we would debit our that fifteen thousand dollar amount here as income received here. So we debit our cash account here for 15000 Then we move over to our revenues account here. Again, everything's in our permanent fund here. We would credit that here for $15,000 to stock income. So this amount we'll be able to spend here on the designated use here, those city park operations. Okay, now we, we received the cash. Now we're just going to transfer it out here to the city park operating fund. So simple here, we're going to credit or reduce our cash account here for that, that dividends we received here, $15,000. And then we would go and the debit or reduce our cash here, credit amount 15,000. Our debit is gonna go to other financing uses here. So we're, we're gonna use that those funds here for those city park operations. So we debit our other financing uses in our permanent fund here for $15,000. That's for the transfer out. And that's for the, their designated use here on, for city park operations. So uh, key here is the earnings are expendable 
for the specific purpose here, the $15,000, but the principal amount here is not expendable. That was that principal amount here of investment in stock here, $800,000. And then just a technical point here, any changes in the fair value in this investment income here, uh, the change in the fair value would be reported in the investment income here. And the key is you may be able to spend some of those revenues here as long as you keep your 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 amount here, the donated amount intact. As long as you keep that principal amount intact, then any you would report any changes here in your investment income if, if it went up a great deal or a great amount here. And you could probably spend some of those uh, increases in your invest changes in your investment income. At the same time, if it went down, then you would probably have to pull back some of your revenues. Uh, you couldn't spend all the revenues generated off any dividends or some income source here. Then you would have to re reduce the number of amount of dividends that you would actually be, be spending based on any changes here uh, and fair value of the, that investment income. You want to keep your principal amount has to remain intact. Okay, so that's just some basic entries here. We really looked at... Uh, uh, we recognize our revenues here for some donations and how we could spend some of those some of the income here off that off those investments here we just look at some investment stocks here but those assets here as we mentioned here they could be for land or whatever and of course land here that would be a, probably a different situation you wouldn't be receiving any donations or any investment income off the land here unless it was rented out or something like that but this is just key uh, just the basic entries here when we how we would handle our revenues or any income uh, in this permanent fund. Okay, so that'll just summarize our topic here on permanent funds.